Don't worry. So constantly the voice. What about this? What about that? What's this? It's the devil constantly speaking. What about this thing? What about that thing? What about this? What about that? Constantly the temptation to worry. What's happening? The, it's the wrong voice. So we've got the devil speaking, and the devil is speaking through thoughts. The devil is speaking through people. The devil is speaking in culture. Uh, there's constantly this voice. And I'm telling you today that, that the attack on your life, the attack against your marriage, the attack against your children, anything and everything, it starts with the wrong voice. And when you submit, when you listen to the wrong voice, John chapter 10 verse 1. John chapter 10 verse 1. Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Say thief and robber. Sorry, I, uh, we were supposed to start with Matthew 9 and then John 10, but um, we're starting with John 10. We'll get back to Matthew 9. I see you guys are catching up with me. Thief and robber. So firstly, he mentions thief and robber. Thief and robber. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but he climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. So the thief and the robber is introduced. A thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. So first we have the thief and the robber, then we have the shepherd of the sheep, and then obviously we have the sheep. So we've got three characters here. We've got the thief and the robber, we've got the shepherd, and then we have the sheep. Verse 3, to him the doorkeeper opens. So that's the shepherd. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. So the shepherd, the sheep hear the voice of the shepherd. Okay. So sheep are supposed to hear the voice of the shepherd. Sheep are supposed to hear the voice of the shepherd, and he leads them out. He calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. So, you know, Jesus, our shepherd, he leads us out of destruction and he leads us into life. He leads you out of, uh, out of darkness and into light. When you follow, when you listen to the voice, the voice of God, the voice of the shepherd. So the, the voice, we've got the voice of the shepherd. And if you listen to the voice and you follow the voice, then that voice will always lead you out of and into. Out of destruction and into life. Out of darkness and into wonderful, glorious life. Out of defeat and into victory. Out of poverty and into prosperity. Out of sickness and disease and into healing and health. When you hear the voice of the shepherd, <coughs> when you hear the voice of the shepherd and you follow him, that's very important. Follow. I want to tell you that, yes, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But we must understand and Christians must understand that faith is not passive. Faith is active. Faith is active. Faith does something. You know, God said to Joshua, go. Joshua 1. Go. Cross the Jordan and go. You, I had to go. Every place the sole of your foot treads upon, I have given you. So I've given you the land, but you've got to go and take it. Go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. <coughs> Go and make disciples. What did they do? They stayed in Jerusalem. Go and make disciples and be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and to all the earth. And what did they do? They stayed in, they stayed in Jerusalem until trouble and persecution comes. <clears throat> the shepherd calls them by name and he leads them out. Leads them out. So he leads them and they must follow. If you don't do what God says, if you don't follow, you're not going to get out. You're not going to get out. You're going to stay there. Not because the shepherd is not leading you out, but because you don't follow him. Verse 4. When he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. Jesus goes before us. Isn't that wonderful? Just, isn't it wonderful that Jesus to know that Jesus goes before you? Jesus goes before you and he makes a way. He makes a way. Okay, so say this. Jesus goes before me. Jesus goes before me. So he makes a way. He makes a way. All the sheep has to do is to hear the voice and follow the shepherd. The shepherd will make a way. And the shepherd of the sheep, the shepherd, the purpose of the shepherd is he leads the sheep. He gives them provision and food. He takes them to the water. He takes them to the food. Provision protects them. He protects them against thieves and robbers. He protects them against wolves and lions and bears. Provision, protection, care. He cares for them. He meets all their needs. He maintains them. He, you know, he shares, shares their wool and knips their nails. 
So it's provision, protection, care, and guidance. Uh, all the, sh the sheep just has to follow. Just be obedient. Just follow. When he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. The sheep follow him, for they know his voice. It's very important for the sheep to know the voice of the shepherd. So we must know the voice of the shepherd. We must spend our time with the voice of the shepherd, not the voice of the stranger. Not the voice of the stranger. We're going to look at that this morning. Verse 5. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger. Remember the thieves and the, ro the robbers. The thieves and the robbers, they are strangers. So the sheep will by no means... The sheep will by no means follow a stranger, but they will flee. flee. They will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of, the st of strangers. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. I want to say to you this morning that as Christians, a lot of our problems is because we know the voice of, str of the stranger. You, s you listen to the stranger. You listen to the wrong voice. You listen to the wrong voice. My problems, I have certain problems in my life because I listen to the wrong voice. So as long as you listen to this voice, you will have these problems. Not only will you have these problems, but I want to tell you, if you keep on listening to this voice, the problems will increase and abound and will overtake you. It will overtake you because the thief has come for no other reason but to steal, to kill and to destroy. And he will not stop ever. Ever. He will not stop. Ever. Until you are destroyed. Completely. So you don't give the devil only a little bit. No, you give him a little bit and he advances. He takes a step into, into your life. You give him a little bit, he takes another step. Where does he stop? He does not stop. Ever. Seeking whom he may devour. Your adversity, the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. I've heard a study by... Teacher Rick Renner, that word devour is the idea of, a bit disgusting, but the idea of like a lion, he's already eaten the prey and now he licks up the blood and fluid that remains. He slurps it up. So the devil, his plan is to devour, to destroy to destroy everything, to eat up everything, and then to slip up what remains. Your adversary. We cannot follow strangers. We cannot follow the voice of a stranger. We cannot follow the voice of strangers. We must flee from the stranger. We cannot know the voice of stranger. We cannot fellowship with the voice of strangers. Yet, we often do. Yet, often, Christians... Fellowship with the wrong voice. Verse 7, Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. I am the door. Jesus is the door for the sheep into life. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. The sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. He will go in and out and find pasture. Pasture is everything a sheep needs. Everything a sheep needs. You understand, God has everything you need. He has, Jesus is everything you need. He makes me, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. I will have no lack because Jesus is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. So I am a happy sheep. I'm lying down in green pastures. He leads me by the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And you know, sometimes and often in life, we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Unfortunately, sometimes we stop and we camp in the valley of the shadow of death instead of walking through it. <clears throat> I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. He will go in and out and find pasture. Verse 10. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. The thief does not come. The, the devil has a plan for your life, one plan for your life, and that plan is stealing, killing, and destroying. That is, that is all. That's all he has for you. He, he's, he's not, it's not giving and taking. It's not giving and taking. If, you, if he gives you something, it's because he's taking two things. So we must understand that the enemy has come for no other reason but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. His only purpose, his mission in your life, in your marriage, and in the life of your children is stealing, killing, and destroying. And he will not stop ever. He will not stop ever until you and your marriage and your children are destroyed. The only way for us 
is to overcome in Jesus' name. We cannot be friends with the devil. We cannot be friends with the devil. The Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. We overcome. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. But the problem is, to submit to God, resist the devil. You cannot be the devil's friend and resist him. You want to resist the devil, and he says, but how can you resist me? You, you, we are friends. Because, you know, we tolerate. We tolerate the devil. We tolerate the devil. We listen to the voice. We listen to that voice. We uh, meditate on that voice. We say what he says sometimes. I I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about Christians generally. And sometimes when we are attacked and we submit to that voice, we sub you, when you submit to that voice and you th start thinking that thing, you start thinking it. Now the Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. So the voice was put into your head that you are not good enough. That was the devil speaking to you. But now that's you thinking, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. And that's now, now you're speaking as if I'm not good enough. That's what you're saying. Now you're living your life as if you're not good enough. What's happening? The devil is devouring, devouring. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's his plan. All evil is, all bad is from the devil. Okay, you must understand, if it's stealing, killing and destroying, it's the devil. God, it, this is never God. God never steals, He never kills, He never destroys. Stealing, killing and destroying, that's the devil. Alright, all darkness is, all darkness, all evil, that is the devil. Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I have come that they may have life. So this is the God kind of life. The God kind of life. It says, it says this, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. So Jesus gives his life. What kind of life does Jesus have? He's got the God kind of life. It's God life. It's God life. Um, Jesus has life as God has life. And the very divine life of God is the divine life that Jesus has given us. It's the divine life that's indwelling you and me. We have the God life in a more abundant measure inside of us. Jesus has come that we may have life, God life, and have it more abundantly. We have more abundant life. Everything good is in the category of this. Everything good, everything constructive, everything pure and everything holy, everything good. There's nothing bad in the God life. There's nothing bad in the God life. If it's bad, it's not in the God life. It is in destruction. So, so stealing, killing, and destroying, sickness, and disease, and poverty, and lack, all of those things is destruction, destruction, defeat. That's the devil. Okay. Don't ever think that don't ever think that sickness is good. Sickness is not good. It's not God. Poverty and defeat is not good. It's not God. That is the devil. Stealing, killing, and destroying. That is the devil. Everything bad is the devil. Everything good is God. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. How do the sheep get this life? The shepherd calls them by name and he leads them out. And they follow him for they know his voice. The sheep follow the shepherd for they know his voice. So the sheep knows the voice of the shepherd. They are not supposed to know the voice of the stranger. They're not, and they're not supposed to follow the stranger. If you entertain the voice of the devil, if you follow his, his if you live according to what he speaks into your mind, stealing, killing, and destroying will will be the result okay we're not supposed to entertain to listen to the voice of the stranger to the voice of the devil we are supposed to listen to the voice of the shepherd and follow him matthew chapter 9 matthew chapter 9 verse 32 thank you jesus hallelujah he has come that we may have life and more abundantly say i have life and i have it more abundantly Hallelujah. So Jesus has come for the reason that you and me may have life, that we may have it more abundantly. All right. So uh, that is everything good. Everything good is, in, is part of that. Matthew chapter 9, verse 32. Um, as they went, behold, out. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a man, mute and demon possessed. Okay. So we have a man here. He's mute and he's demon possessed. Is this the devil or is this God? devil 
And when the devil was cast out, the mute spoke. When he cast out the devil, the mute spoke. And the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never seen like this in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He casts out demons by the rule, by the He casts out demons by the ruler of the demons. Okay. So the Pharisees said, Jesus casts out demons by the ruler of the demons. To what voice were they listening? To what voice was the Pharisees listening to be able to call pure good evil? They were listening to the voice of the devil and they were yielding to the voice of the devil. There is a voice today. The devil tells us that good is evil. And the devil tells us that evil is good. And if you listen to that voice, stealing, killing, and destroying will abound. 35. And then Jesus went out all the cities and villages. So Jesus went out teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. 